Welcome to The Great Exchange, a podcast about examining the lies that we believe and exchanging them for God's truth. I'm your host, Brady Cohn, and joining me once again is our co-host, Jason Wilson. Yeah, Good morning, for, Jason. Good morning, Brady. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's great to be here this morning. Uh, I think we're all ready to go. I have my coffee and my uh, water because... I am really, really weird, and I like to take alternating sips of cold and hot. And so my wife is, I'm so hard to live with, my, my poor wife. It's like I have all these like weird little little habits. You know, with my wife, I joke with her that she's, she's not high maintenance, uh-huh. but she's medium maintenance. Oh, yes. Would you, are you high maintenance? Uh, I, I, I think that uh, I, I am kind of high maintenance. Even one of one of Mary's friends, the one who set us up on a blind date, uh, one day she's like, Brady, you're, you're so high maintenance. And I'm like, I know, and I'm trying not to be. It's like I try to change, but I'm, I am kind of a little bit high maintenance. But probably compared to some people, I might be medium maintenance. So I'll, I'll take Mary that. Mary strikes me as low maintenance. Like Mary is she's so not low maintenance. No drama. Um, she is content with everything, and so it's. Uh, I, I feel bad for her because uh, she probably deserves someone who's easier to live with. But she's That's sweet. Funny. The other the other day, as we're going to bed, I'm like, Mary, am I am I hard to live with? She's like. You are hard to live with, but not too hard. That's that's it's like, nice. That's, that's sweet. So, that's nice. Yeah. Look at her being so she's encouraging. Too. Yes, she is. She is. So, so Jason, last night, uh, we were, we, you, you and I are very different people, which is, uh, I appreciate our, our friendship. And um, uh, I have a better taste in movies than you do. Uh, <laughs> your favorite movies are zombie movies. And my favorite movies are Will Ferrell movies. I Maybe not zombie movies, but hey, I introduced you to that. A uh, really dark German film a while back. Yes, I did appreciate lives it. What's the name of that? The Lives of Others. It's yes, so good. I, I actually, me and my wife watched that one day and it was oh, great. So, what'd you think? Uh, she thought it was great. Yeah. It's a fantastic it was really, really movie. good. So I loved it. And that's a great movie for you because you're such a deep thinker that I love your analysis of that movie of watching the, the someone's attitude change in such subtle ways is... Uh, and you were really able to, to see that. Yeah, so that that's, so that's cool. But last so night, good. you also uh, introduced me to the Will Ferrell blooper reel, <laughs> which if you've never seen that, it's hilarious. All these scenes from uh, Anchorman that I didn't know existed that never actually made the movie, they're oh, pretty man. hilarious. You're much more of a Will Ferrell fan than I Yes, am. yes. So, yeah. Well, the, when people ask my favorite genre of movies, I say Will Ferrell movies. Yeah. So that's, how sophist- Stranger than fiction. that's how sophisticated I am. What about so, Stranger Than Fiction? Yeah, I wasn't actually a huge fan. Um, like my favorites, favorites would be, uh, which this is kind of embarrassing, and people probably say I need some discipleship and should repent, but like old school, Anchorman, um, semi-pro, very inappropriate. Never seen it. Uh, so that was in my, probably in my pre-marriage days, and when we uh, got married and we had both of our movie collections, uh, Mary was like, I don't want my movies to touch your movies. <laughs> So, because hers were very sophisticated, like, you know, English period dramas and classic oh, novels have been made into movies and yep. mine were, were Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. But I, I bring this up because I feel like today's topic relates a little bit to some of these zombie movies. Okay. So, not not to not I, to I, condemn anyone here. I'm excited but, where you're going yes, with this. Uh, so, we're going to talk a little bit about transgenderism and okay. some things we're seeing in the news right now. Because I feel like we wake up and we see the, these news stories. One of these big news stories is... This the swimmer on the Penn State swim team, uh, she goes by Leah Thomas now, a transgendered woman, so was a man competing as a woman for, excuse me, competing as a man for three years and then went through this gender transition and now is competing as a woman and uh, just won the national title in the women's category. And I think that we wake up to these news stories and we feel like, are we living in some alternate universe? It's like, this is like a zombie movie we're living in. This can't be real. Like, is that the reaction you have when you see some of these, some of these events? Yeah, well, I, I think what I'd be interested in, because I think one thing when we talk about issues like this, especially cultural issues, mm-hmm. it's helpful to be able to articulate uh, why someone would affirm it. And probably my, my challenge is, and, and maybe you can help me with this, is could you give me like a, a good argument for why uh, someone would say, "Hey, the, the swimmers doing something brave," uh, and and not just like, "Oh, they're they're being themselves," right? Uh-huh. I, I, you you kind of hear that narrative, yeah. But that feels cheap, and I don't think people. And maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at it 
too deeply, but I don't think most people are like, oh, that's great because that person's being themselves. What would be the celebration for the yeah. swimmer? Is it, what's her name? Le- Leah? Uh, goes by Leah now. Was Leah. William. Okay. Goes by Leah. Okay. And so now Leah so Thomas. What, what would you say if you could say, hey, here, here's why we should celebrate Leah. Yeah. Like, how, how would you articulate that to where if, if I were a big fan of Leah and you would explain it to me in a way that I would say, I affirm what you're saying. Does, does my question yeah. make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think that we need to be careful as Christians that and uh, how we talk about these issues and really we need to show compassion and humanity towards Absolutely. people. And so it's easy to look at a situation like this and just blow up and, you know, this is so ridiculous. And But we need to talk about it in a way that gives grace to those who hear. Right. And we need to talk about it in the public sphere, whether that's social media or in places that... And I've, I've been tempted, as I've seen some news articles, to respond uh, in some very ungracious ways. Mm-hmm. But we need to celebrate the humanity and see the humanity of people. Right. And, uh, and we should mourn our... When we, when we see these situations and we use our discernment to understand that there's something wrong here we should mourn the fact that this person is so lost and we should our 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 discernment and our judgment of the situation should come from a place of humility right and so we need to respond to these issues from a place of mourning and humility and i would also say too just just for the christians listening like cynicism is not a yeah. fruit of the spirit absolutely and it's just intellectually lazy yeah you know absolutely. i mean you actually think through the issue of uh-huh. why someone feels that way yeah because i don't think it boils down to oh william wanted to uh, have a, a higher, uh, you know, he wanted more success in swimming. So yeah. he transitions. It's probably not that mm-hmm. simple, mm-hmm. right? It's, it, that, that's kind of a cynical approach. That may be true. I don't think it probably is. Yeah. Uh, it could be. Yeah. But uh, just to say that's as far as it goes is, is not, I think, actually honoring the, the other side of the position. Not that yeah. we even have to agree with the position, but at least to understand it. Yeah, absolutely. We should be a people who seek to understand what's going on inside right. someone's soul and inside someone's heart. Yeah. So, so how, as a pastor, how do you respond to these situations? How do you talk about what, as you add, you're a very good deep thinker, good at analyzing culture and people and different issues. Um, uh, and I think it's easy as Christians to look at this and say, oh, this is so crazy. How do you think that we got here as a culture to where uh, we're so strongly affirming something that just seems so wrong to us? Well, I, oh gosh. What, what a question, right? Uh, do you want me to give a thought? Well, I can give you a thought, and then I'm sure you'll have uh-huh. twice as much to say than I do about it. I think I mean, we talked about this a little bit briefly, right? Of yeah. telling kids you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, and that's I think that that's, as a Christian culture, uh, we've so many times bought into cultural lies. that, uh, And one of those is that we tell our kids, you can be anything you want to be. It's like, no, you can't. You should strive to be the person that God made you to be and, mm-hmm. and build on the giftings that God made you to be and embrace the role that God gave you as a man, as a woman, as a husband, father, wife, as a, a member of the body of Christ. And so in some very small ways, we have bought into many cultural lies. And one is that you can be whoever you want to be. Right. And, uh, and, and I don't think that most Christians who, have, who say those things to their kids really put the dots together that this is where that type of thinking leads. This is where those lies leave. But Mm -hmm. that's really, this is a culmination of that, of if you feel this way, you can be that. Right. And so we, we have a culture where we so much rely on, on feelings and we find our humanity through expressing ourselves and expressing whatever feelings are inside of us, where when we look at that through a biblical lens, we know that our feelings lie to us mm-hmm. and we should take our feelings and examine them through a lens of scripture and understand our, our feelings are deceitful sometimes. But it's also important to be able to examine our feelings because our feelings expose what we're actually believing. And so too many times in the Christian culture, we say, well, we can't trust our feelings, so we're going to completely disregard our feelings. Yeah, that's not helpful. And either. that's not healthy. And and uh, that's not a healthy way to raise our kids. That's not a healthy way for us to live because we need to be able to examine what's going on inside of us so that not so that we can live it out and embrace it and, and celebrate it, but instead so that we can take those feelings and examine them according to scripture mm-hmm. so that we can understand, is this God's truth that he instilled in me or is this something that my heart is deceiving me in? Right. I think uh, Pete Cesaro has done a lot of work on that. At least the only person I know I've heard talk about it is like the gift the like 
the spiritual gift of limitations, mm -hmm. right? Of like, you can't work, you know, 120 hours a week. You yeah. just can't do it. You can't, you maybe, maybe you can't be, you know, six foot tall when you're five, six, right? You just, there's certain things that you're just limited in. Whether, and and like people Absolutely. get, people get sick, they get cancer. Uh, they have a financial uh, fallout. Uh, maybe relationship breaks. Like there are gifts to limitations. Absolutely. Right? And so I think this is another issue of that where, man, there's a limitation where I'm sure William, Leah, like you take it in the Christian context, a limitation would be, I can't be the gender I want. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, but it's not just to that. I mean, there's all kinds of limitations Christians have to live in. Um, I, I mean, we've been in ministry long enough. There's people who are single. That feels like a limitation. Mm -hmm. But on the same time, there are people who are married and that feels like a limitation, mm -hmm. right? So there is a gift to limitations. You really can't be or do all you want to do and be. I mean, absolutely. And part of that like, is there's a de there's a mark of spiritual maturity that says I am dependent on Jesus because I can't do everything. Absolutely. Right? So, and I'm going to thrive and grow in the place that God has me, living out the purposes that he has for me with the limitations that he gave me, the gifts and abilities he, he gave me, and understanding what those gifts and abilities are and mm -hmm. how he made me to function and growing in maturity helps me thrive within the limitations that God gave me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that would probably be my, my take on it. Although, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't feel like I'm as far as my church context, that's not necessarily a huge issue for us as far as like, we don't really have that, that I know of. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people who are transitioning gender yeah, wise. Yeah. You know. But we still have to raise our kids in this culture. Yes. We have to raise our kids in this context where this is everywhere around them and being celebrated. So you're a parent, I'm a parent, uh, you're much farther in the process than I am. And so we need to figure out how do we walk alongside our kids? And I think part of that is understanding that we can't trust our culture to raise our kids Correct. and we can have hope. I think I see so many parents who are so discouraged that, uh, that our culture is so bad at going to mess up our kids. It's mm -hmm. like, no, like our kids should have Jesus. And right. when there's an even bigger gap between what our culture says and what Jesus says, then it's an opportunity for our kids to shine the light of Christ even more. Mm -hmm. And right now I, I see this whole um, transgender movement as devaluing women. It's oh, devaluing women. They don't even have a definition. They, they've reduced womanhood to a feeling of mm -hmm. like, if you feel like you're a woman, then that's you're a woman and that's all that it is. And I know that womanhood is so much greater than that. God created it to be such a wonderful thing. And really, in, in so many times uh, in history, we've, we've reduced womanhood and uh, we've tried to lord over women and we, we've, we've uh, been abusive towards women. And I think it's interesting in the Bible when it talks about women as being the helper, the helpmate. Mm -hmm. the, the word that's used, that, that is used in Scripture, is used throughout Scripture many times to describe how God helps people. Mm -hmm. Like, that is how high we are to regard womanhood, is that God gave them as a helpmate in the same way that God helps us. And like, he created womanhood and being feminine as such a beautiful, wonderful uh, aspect of creation that should be celebrated and should be, we should, we should cultivate that in women and, and the girls that we're raising and help them see that God created womanhood to be such a wonderful gift for them. Right. And that is becoming more and more contrary to how culture sees womanhood. Sure. Sure. And that we, in our church, we're preaching through the book of judges and we talked about Deborah, um, and the fact that she was not plan B, right? Mm -hmm. Like she was not yeah. like the backup plan. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. because a man couldn't do it, so God had to settle for Deborah. Mm -hmm. Like she was Plan A, yeah. You know, to help lead Israel into victory. Um, but let me let me go back to the beginning of our conversation. What what is the argument to celebrate the swimmer? Um, I think the argument to celebrate is that you can be whatever you want to be and celebrate that this person is uh, this person is living out the feelings inside of them and. Uh, I think I already mentioned that we, we live in our culture. We find our humanity right now and 
living out our feelings in this concept of authenticity Mm -hmm. and authenticity to our culture is living out the feelings that are inside of us. And so, so I think that's what our culture is celebrating right now. And so maybe there's more to it than that, but when the basis of her womanhood is nothing more, it's not based on biology. It's not based on science. It's not based on her DNA, her, her physical sex and the, you know, the, 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 the physical characteristics, characteristics of her body that we think they find man her woman her it's based on nothing other than feelings well then what what do the and i'm really not i'm not i'm not just trying to like poke at this but the other swimmers right and I, maybe you've seen the video where the other swimmers are off to the right of yeah the frame uh-huh. and they're like doing their own celebration yeah. right and obviously it, it's cost those it's cost those swimmers yeah absolutely something. it's costing so, them their their dreams and their rightful place as right. number one and number two and number three so what would the argument be for someone who is going to celebrate the swimmer like how do they address those ladies yeah um they they address those ladies by saying that they should embrace this person as a woman that this is a woman because uh she feels like a woman therefore she is a woman and so so the part of our culture that's celebrating this um thinks that these other three women who uh in my opinion got screwed over uh sure uh, they they <laughs> totally got screwed out of what they're entitled to, mm-hmm. and and our and our culture says that they should embrace this person because they are a woman, even though they are not. I I was reading some interesting statistics on sports, and uh, if you apply the same logic to uh, all these individual sports and like the college, I think it's the two hundred meter race in track and field. The, there's been a long-standing record. A woman has, in the women's category, the same woman has held the record in the 200 meter for like 20 years now. Wow. And just last year alone, there was 200, or excuse me, 4,000 male athletes who would have broken her record if they were competing in the women's category. Mm. There's 200 college male athletes who ran faster times than the woman who holds the record. And so that shows you that men and women are different. And mm. that's something to embrace. And I right. think that some of it is that we've abused women over the, the, the centuries and the, the you know, thousands of years. And we've gotten so confused about what is manhood and what is womanhood. Oh, and, sure. um, and, and this is just really the capstone on that to where it becomes very, very obvious of how we have abused manhood and womanhood. Therefore, we just try to erase it instead of trying to restore it and redeem it to what God had intended it to be. Sure, and the irony is, is that what's maybe you could say oppressed women or um, kind of held women back a bit has been sort of uber traditional, like uber traditionalism, yeah, right? Yeah. And now it's the uber liberalism Absolutely. that is suppressing And so women. women have made so much progress and now this aspect of that's that's being pushed by what we call liberalism is actually being harmful towards women. It is ruining the pro- you know women now have uh, much more opportunities in sports and Title IX was has been a big thing in our country mm-hmm. to guarantee equal access to uh, athletic opportunities for women. And now that is being degraded because when you define womanhood as nothing but a feeling, uh, then anyone can be a woman. And you ask someone who believes in that ideology, what is a woman? And they, they have no way of defining it other than it's a feeling. So therefore, anyone if anyone can be a woman, if they feel like a woman, hmm. then they're actually degrading all women because there's nothing then unique setting them apart. There's nothing to celebrate about their womanhood because they can't even define it more than just a feeling. Sure. So in your, in your estimation, do you think that this is going to continue or do you think that culturally we're going to be like this doesn't make sense because like i'm hearing from and these aren't necessarily conservative christian voices i mean you've got people on the left who are even saying like or i shouldn't say left i mean that sounds pejorative i don't mean it that way but people who would not like fall into yeah. a christian who aren't coming from a biblical worldview not who at all are who saying, are saying that this, this is crazy yeah i think that it's uh there's enough powers to be you know people running our institutions in this country that are so much on that side that i think it's going to be a fight and a struggle for a long time i don't think it's going away anytime soon i think there's there's biblical reasons and we shouldn't be surprised that that our world is hardened and Mm -hmm. our world doesn't make any sense 
And uh, we need to be able to look at the world and say, this is what happens because of spiritual blindedness of people trading God's truth for a lie. And this is what happens when we worship creation instead of worshiping the creator. Sure. And so we shouldn't be surprised by that. As Christians, we need to be careful to not be caught off guard by sinfulness, by mm -hmm. brokenness, by blindedness, by uh, distortion of reality. Yep. Because that, and so we need to understand how to navigate that with a gospel hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to talk about these issues. We need to raise our, our boys and girls with a gospel hope and raise them to be biblical men and biblical women that display the glory of God. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with all you said there, but I, I don't think it's going to have a long term. Oh, yeah. You think it's going to crumble I, I, on itself? Yeah, I think it will. I, I, don't, I, I think when you... Yeah, it, it'll just be interesting because you start talking about even global sports like Olympic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard to, you know, if you had like... A Middle Eastern country competing with, yeah, like it's just, I, I just don't yeah. see how that's even going to work. And yeah. it's just like I, I do think that people are going to realize it, it's, it will destroy women's sports. It is and women's gonna, sports is a great thing, and yeah. so it is going to destroy women's I think sports. Somebody's so, going to have to say and that. Nothing. So that might be the case. It might be the case that the, how it's playing out right now might crumble. But I don't think that our culture is going to change with transgenderism and uh, so much of what's going on unless there's a major revival because it's only going to be the gospel that changes people's hearts. So maybe our systems might reject what's going on because this can't sustain right. itself. So our systems of, you know, uh, of that we have to have even women's sports and the, the systems we've put in place to oversee those, that might change. Right. But I don't think that the cultural confusion, the spiritual confusion around gender is is going to change anytime soon because th that would take a revival and we pray for that right that would take people's hearts uh turning towards the lord and seeing truth seeing the beauty of gender and how god made us seeing the purity and the holiness that can happen when we embrace the gender that god created us yeah with. absolutely so yeah how would you define holiness uh, we were talking about last oh night gosh. about peter jones and you yeah, had a great quote from him yeah he, i was listening to a talk he did and he mentioned this if i get this right talking about what made you know if you read in uh the Old Testament, where you have certain utensils in the temple are mm -hmm. holy, and he said mm -hmm. the reason why they were holy was because they were um, they were in their proper place, serving yeah. the purpose they were made for. And like he just defined it that way. And we've heard holiness as set apart, but that's what those utensils were. They were set apart for that purpose. And so, if you think about even you know gender stuff, like yeah. there, there's a holiness you could say. To and we could that's a whole other discussion of yeah. what is biblical manhood, what is womanhood, yeah, absolutely, which we don't have time for right today. But like things serving their per their God given absolutely. purpose, you absolutely. know, is is like how he defined holiness in those. Yeah, in those and you know, examples. I've experienced that uh, to get really personal here. I left the the gay life, you know, fifteen years ago, and um, and now that I'm in marriage with a woman. And it's like when sex and gender is in its proper place, there's a way that our physical relationship, it's like, man, like there is something that is holy and pure about this yeah. that I never experienced before, even though the draw towards that can be still strong in me sometimes sure. with dealing with same sex traction. And it's like, it feels like there's be so, so, so much just passion uh, being with the man gets, but that passion is coming from a place of my own dysfunction uh, sure. and, and how I desire that. But when uh, uh, sex is put in its proper place and used for the proper purposes, and now I see the fruit of that, which is this beautiful little girl that God gave us, mm -hmm. it, it feels so much different. There's a purity and a holiness about it that uh, is something that I've never, I never experienced right. when it was being used for my own purposes, right. to just fulfill my own, my own sinful uh, and dysfunctional desires. Yeah. God knows what he's doing. Absolutely. So yeah. that's a great way to end it. So thank you so much for everyone for joining us uh, as we process through these lies that our culture believes and exchange them for God's truth. I pray that you all can do that in your own life. And as you go throughout your week, you can examine maybe how you've believed some of these same lies that our culture believes and you can exchange them for God's truth. So thank you for joining us. Make sure that you share us on social media. If you are encouraged by these episodes, share it with some of your friends and we pray that it's an encouragement for them too. Thank you. Mm -hmm.